Welcome to Evening Prayers for today, Monday, the 23rd of January, 2023. I'm Tony Law, a local preacher in the Stamford Methodist Circuit. This is the week of Holocaust Memorial Day, and our theme this week is the theme for the memorial this year, Ordinary People. It's also the week of prayer for Christian unity, where Christians in every part of the country are coming together to celebrate each other's contributions to the Universal Church and to pray that the differences that hold us apart can be overcome. It is ordinary people who build God's kingdom in this way. So we, ordinary people, come together in this time and find Jesus among us. Let's pray. It is the Lord in the dawning, in the renewal, in the arrival, in the new day. It is the Lord in the crowd, in the church, in the conversation, in the crisis. It is the Lord in our joys, in our sorrows, in our endings of the day. It is the Lord in our caring, in the humble, in the stranger, in the poor. It is the Lord, risen and returned, alive forevermore, traveling alongside. It is the Lord. Amen. And so today's reading, like yesterday's song, at first it seems to be about someone who isn't exactly an ordinary person, King David in this case. But wait and see where David's heart is. It's part of the account in the second book of Samuel of how the Ark of the Covenant, the casket that contained the stone tablets the Ten Commandments were inscribed on, how the Ark of the Covenant was brought to Jerusalem from its first resting place when Israel was established. So in the second book of Samuel, chapter 6, it begins at verse 12. So David went to bring up the ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom in the city of David with rejoicing. When those who were carrying the ark of the Lord had taken six steps, he sacrificed a bull and a fattened calf. Wearing a linen ephod, David was dancing before the Lord with all his might, while he and all Israel were bringing up the Ark of the Lord with shouts and the sound of trumpets. As the Ark of the Lord was entering the city, Mishael, daughter of Saul, watched from a window. And when she saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, she despised him in her heart. They brought the Ark of the Lord and set it in its place inside the tent that David had pitched for it. And David sacrificed burnt offerings and fellowship offerings before the Lord. After he had finished the sacrifice, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord Almighty. Then he gave a loaf of bread, a cake of dates, and a cake of raisin to each person in the whole crowd of Israelites, both men and women. And all the people went to their homes. When David returned home to bless his household, Mishal, daughter of Saul, came out to meet him and said, How the king of Israel has distinguished himself today! going around half-naked in full view of the slave girls of his servants, as any vulgar fellow would. David said to Michelle, It was before the Lord who chose me, rather than your father or anyone from his house, when he appointed me ruler over the Lord's people Israel. I will celebrate before the Lord, and I will become even more undignified than this, and I will be humiliated in my own eyes. But by these slave girls you spoke of, I will be held in honour. 
Did you notice then that his queen thought David should have kept himself aloof? She was a king's daughter. He had been only a shepherd boy, but he is king and his model of kingship was different. We're seeing something of this in our own country at present. Our late queen's model of sovereignty was a world apart from the despotic world of the Tudor kings and queens, and even from the imperial one she inherited from Queen Victoria through her father and his heritage. So there's David, out in public, dancing with all his might. And Michel says, don't do that. You're making such a fool of yourself in front of the common people and the slave girls and discrediting me, you can almost hear her adding. But listen to David's answer. It's in three parts. First, note that he's already made gifts to all the people who were there. Second, then, he says he was dancing for God and doing so to celebrate that it was God who chose him. But then listen to this. He says, I will become even more undignified than this, and I will be humiliated even in my own eyes, but by these slave girls you spoke of, I will be held in honour. Who matters to David? Those slave girls and the ordinary people. <clears throat> in the old authorised version, David's words are translated, I will become more vile. I have become sure that John Wesley was quoting this, when he asserted that he consented to become more vile and started to preach away from churches. It was the ordinary people who heard him. I went to a Methodist private school, Kingswood, which Wesley founded originally in Kingswood, Bristol, to provide education opportunities for the children of Bristol's coal mining families. It's an irony that this and many of the more well-known and now privileged schools were originally founded by church leaders to provide education for people who otherwise couldn't afford it. Here in Rutland, we have three in a line from Stamford in Lincolnshire through Oakham to Uppingham. And there's a connection with me there too, because Kingswood was evacuated to share with Uppingham during the 1939-45 war, when its own buildings were requisitioned as an annex to Bath's big naval base. We know the words of Jesus, which Matthew reports at the end of the gospel. He says, therefore go and make disciples of all nations. We quote it often, but like David, like Wesley, we need to remember that the first word links to the ordinary people. The first word isn't make, the first word is go. And so our song in Singing the Faith number 418 reminds us that we have a gospel.
in all the earth. And so to our prayers and a prayer from the week of prayer for Christian unity. Gracious and loving God, expand our vision that it may be wide enough to recognize the beautiful complexity of the tapestry you choose to weave with each and every one of your ordinary people. Gather our frayed edges, our loose ends, and bind us together for your glory. Amen. God, creator of all, in your love you have made each one of us. In your grace you gathered us together in your image. In your mercy you make us restless until we find our rest in you. Disturb us in our contentment. Distract us from our comforts. Deter us from our conflicts until your kingdom comes and your will is done. Amen. And so we pray in thanksgiving and dedication. Lord God, we come to you today with praise and thankfulness and commit our lives once more into your keeping. We thank you for our friends who have loved us, for fellow Christians from whom we have learned so much, for mutual help and support from neighbours, family and friends, and for the height and depth of our human experience. We bring our gratitude to you for the glimpses of the eternal that come to us through the beauty of nature, the words of scripture, and the love and kindness of ordinary people. Above all, we thank you for Jesus, for his birth and ministry, his death and resurrection, and the power of his spirit. And we thank you for those great moments of revelation deep within our own lives, when we have felt our hearts moved our spirits lifted by yours, our confidence, rest confidence restored, and our sins forgiven. And so as we rest at the end of this day and step forward into tomorrow, make us brave and courageous and give us a sense of fellowship with the saints of this and every age. So may we encourage all who journey with us in this life. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we share the universal prayer of the church as always. Please share using any form or language which is appropriate for you. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you for sharing this time together. As always, may the blessing of God, God beyond us, God alongside us, and God unbounded, be with us now and forever. Amen. Amen.